this video, we will explain the designing unit of the qualification pathway. Successful completion of this unit along with the following units on the screen now shall give you a full qualification. You will be awarded the FIA AO Level 3 in Fire Detection Alarm Design, Theory and Regulatory Requirements. This five-day course is available to those that have taken and passed the foundation unit of the qualification pathway. This course builds upon the knowledge gained previously in the foundation and introduces a lot of new areas. The course has 14 areas of study in total, labelled A to N on the syllabus set by the FIA awarding organisation. The first topic is legislation. Learners will enhance their understanding of legislation and its impact on fire alarm systems to ensure that designs comply with, or at least take into account, legal requirements. Next is BS 5839, IS 3218 and BS 6266. Learners will further deepen their knowledge of applicable codes of practice taking into account all parts of the standard for example, BS 5839 parts 1 through to 9. You'll discover what the standards say about detection alarm design, system integrity, remote signalling and system categories. The third topic listed as C on the syllabus is BS 7273. This series of standards covers the operation of fire protection measures and the interfacing such measures required to a fire detection alarm system. This will have an impact on the design and operation of the fire detection alarm system. In this topic, learners will cover enhanced detection requirements, categories and types of fire protection measures and their impact on design of the system and their cause and effect requirements. The next topic is the BS EN 54 series of standards. EN 54 is the standard for fire alarm equipment in Europe. Compliance is mandatory under the Construction Products Regulation and to use non-compliant products is illegal. It is essential that designer have a reasonable knowledge of the standards, the terminology and the way that EN54 describes the fire detection alarm equipment. This topic covers all of the major areas of this standard to ensure designers learn to be compliant. Next, learners will study the wiring regulations BS7671. Learners will study the relationship between the codes of practice for FDNA systems and the wiring regulations. They'll also learn about safe electrical design, cable containment and structured wiring systems. Next is BS5266 and signage. Learners will develop their knowledge of emergency lighting principles, emergency lighting and fire detection systems and signage requirements. It may be necessary to incorporate both emergency lighting and fire detection alarm systems under a single design. So in this topic, learners will be taught the principles behind this. The seventh area, G, on the syllabus is BS 9999 and BS 9991. In a nutshell, this topic looks at how passive and active fire protection, escape routes and the structure and compartmentation of buildings as well as the management of the building, can help to reduce the risk of fire. This topic helps learners gain the understanding of the advanced techniques that are used to reduce risks so that he or she can offer effective solutions to the customer. Next on the syllabus is BS12845. Learners will gain an understanding of automatic extinguishing systems, the interfacing with fire detection alarm systems and the selection of control and indicating equipment. Section I is BS7974. Learn about the basic fire engineering design principles, 
discover how codes of practice can be used with fire engineering to reduce risk, and learn how fire engineering might be used as the basis of a variation to the code of practice in specific situations. Next up on the syllabus is interpreting customer specifications. The starting point of any fire detection alarm system is establishing the needs of the customer. This topic area helps learners to identify, interpret and apply their knowledge of design principles to customer requirements. The 11th area on the syllabus is K, selecting the system type and system design. This topic area has a large amount of content so it's hard to summarise, but essentially it looks at how and why selection of equipment, interfacing, integration, reliability, maintenance and ease of use will all be affected by the system design. You'll learn about selecting detector types, speed of response and avoiding unwanted alarms alongside a raft of other related areas. Part L is liaising with third parties, communication and documentation. You'll learn about the needs of the other individuals involved in the fire alarm system, such as the customer, the fire risk assessor, the project manager and the installer. This is essential since effective communication is required for the system designer if the provision of the fire alarm system is to proceed smoothly. There are two further topic areas, Part M and Part N. M covers advanced system design principles, whilst N covers maintenance methodology. Advanced system design principles helps designers become aware of potential reliability problems, as well as hazardous situations that could be experienced in the provision of a fire alarm system in complex sites including large buildings and systems for sites with multiple buildings. Learners will also discover how these risks can be reduced or avoided by specifying the appropriate equipment. Maintenance methodology looks at the maintaining of the fire alarm system from the perspective of the designer. Technicians will learn about how the choice of detectors and the positioning of the detectors can have an impact on the ease and cost of maintenance. Fire alarm designers need to be aware of the impact that his or her choices are making to the system and to its ongoing maintenance. So this topic area will cover system testing, fault finding and false alarms. Remember, this is just a quick overview of each topic. We strongly recommend that you download the full syllabus to find out about the course content. Once you've done all the studying with us, it's exam time. The exam is set by the awarding organisation and is three hours long. As with all examinations on the qualification pathway, it is taken digitally on a tablet and conducted in standard exam conditions no books or conferring allowed. Once you've taken and passed all four units in the qualification, you'll be awarded your certificate. If you would like to find out more about what the course covers, click the link below the video to download the full syllabus or download the prospectus by clicking the link in the top right. And we look forward to having you in one of our classes soon. <laughs>